G'day YouTube, my name's Lance, welcome to Bundy Bear's Shed. Well, a weather report. Look, 17 to 24, I think it was. I half forgot that, <laughs> and showers. But look, it's, it is a bit overcast outside. Um, certainly a chance of a shower. But last week we were supposed to get 15 millimetres and um, I sort of got stuff in the shed in a hurry if I could. And um, Plasma Dave come for a visit and I gave him some of the... Um, oh, the old toolbox and some of the shelving, the expanded sheeting that the, the blue boxes go on, the parts boxes go on and had a yarn and so I thought, oh, well, I've got everything out of the rain that needs to be out of the rain pretty well. And um, then we got one and a half millimetres, so <laughs> it was a bit of a fizzer. But look, it doesn't matter. Um, yeah, it's um, hopefully we get a little bit though. Um, in... Oh, over at the orchard in, um, in preparation for the rain, I thought, oh, well, if we're getting this 15 millimetres of rain, um, I might water the orchard. So I spent a day and a half watering the orchard and I've, I've used, I've only got about a quarter of the tank, well, not even that, out of the big tank out the back left. And I thought, well, I'll water the orchard. It certainly needed it anyway. And um, the rain will top that up and it'll make it a real good water. So... Yeah, I used a fair bit of air water up doing that, then it didn't bloody rain. So, um, so yeah, we just got to wait for rain. But we are coming into the stormy season, so, um, yeah, let's hope something happens there. We'll, we'll just see how it goes. Um, most of the week, I, I've been doing work for Queensland Tractor Spares, but um, um, I have been spending a lot of time sorting parts out. And I've been cleaning up the toolboxes and wiping them all over and that. And you might be able to see on this... Renegade toolbox here. The the Renegade wording. Um, yeah, the <laughs> the bloody Renegade wording. Um, I had a bit of, but because it was near the vice there, that end of the box had a couple of oily splatters on it and that. And I had a bit of brake cleaner um, on my rag. On a, I used like a chucks cloth sort of thing on a rag, and I thought oh, I'll give the box a wipe. So I wiped the oil off and all that, and I wiped across. The renegade and the paint started coming off in the bloody on the rag. So I spent a little while with a bit of um, I let it dry. Then I spent a bit of time with a, my finger with a bit of brake cleaner, right, trying to clean it, clean it up where it smudged the <laughs> smudged the logo. So that's up to shit. <laughs> um, but look, it's oh look, it's looking okay. I'm just whinging really. But I reckon now if I put a tiny little bit of polish across the top. I'd, where the black is smudged onto the red, I could probably polish the top off there. So, um, look, that might happen yet if it annoys me enough. Um, see how we go. But I, I also went for a lap into trade tools. Last week they had a, um, a, drill and, um, a drill and an angle grinder kit on special. And um, so I went and bought it. And so I've bought a Makita 5-inch angle grinder, but this is a brushless one. Now, the reason I went this way is um, I have a brushed one and um, it gets really hot around the, um, around the brushes. And I'm sort of not sure what was going on there. So I thought, look, and, and I also have a drill that the, I've, I've buggered a gear in the gearbox on the drill. So um, I think it's low, low range where all the torque is. I think I've buggered a gear, but the fast works or something like that. But... Um, so they, they had a deal going on in there and you could buy, oh that drill, that's, that's way heavier than the drills I've been using. Um, yeah, proper tradesman quality, quality. it's a hammer drill and um, yeah, it's got adjustable torque settings and things like that for screws and yeah, so um, it's a pretty good, yeah, I'm, I'm quite pleased with it, um, high, low. Um, not that I need the hammer on this, I have a, a larger Makita hammer drill, but um, but yeah, you got that. And they usually come with a couple of five amp hour Milwaukee batteries. Oh, Milwaukee, got Milwaukee. Makita batteries. And um, so for the 600 bucks, you got these two and three batteries. Now, the batteries, a month or two ago, I bought two six amp hour Makita batteries for $369. The batteries are bloody dear. But um, I've got extra batteries and they, they throw an extra one in for the deal. So, um, 
So for the moment, this is a five amp hour, they, they threw five amp hours in. So I'm all set up there. I've got where I have my battery rack up there, but um, up, up where I'm shifting the stuff out of the shipping container, I've got some bookshelves and there's another row of four there. So I'll probably bring them here. Maybe put them on the bench over there so they're handy for that. So, um, so yeah, I, I upgraded the drill and that. Um, a mate's got one of these Makita, it's got a chunky brushless body like this in a nut gun. Um, 3 8 drive. Man, do they put out some torque. I'd, I have the little one, the lighter duty one, and it's, it's fine for round engines and that, it's all you need. But um, yeah, for the size of them, they put out some stick. So um, yeah, that's, that's something new for the shed. So yeah, the, um, I have the big drawer over there is full of Makita stuff, the, the one with the Renegade, with the smudged Renegade on it. But now I've got, a, I've got another box, another drawer down on the black tool boxes for the Makita stuff as well. So, so yeah, that's a bit of an upgrade, which I'd, I had been sort of looking, well, I'd been looking at the skins and just the skins were like $330 each or something like that. So for $600 for the drill, the skins, the, uh, the charger, the transport box and um, a few batteries, well, yeah, it was a good deal, so worth having. Um, I think I bought, I bought a couple of little magnetic trays too. They have a um, little magnetic tray and the bloody thing's this wide by so long. And just an ideal size if you're just popping something out quickly and, um, and yeah, you only want three or four screws to hold. So I've, at the moment I've got the fuel tank out of the pressure cleaner still and I've put red coat in it and look, it'll be dry now. I just need to take time and put the fuel tank back in and um, probably keep it out of the weather a bit more than I have been. I've been a bit slack there. So um, we'll see how we go. Um, but that might be a today job. If it showers, I, I might be doing that. Um, we'll just see. But most of the time it's been on the shed cleanup. Um, the, you'll see a few parts boxes around up on top of the Renegade, that's where the filters are starting to build along there. Um, I'll take you for a walk later and I'll show you in some of the drawers. Now, um, I've been getting parts from up the back in that pile, those three pallets I had, and um, I'm cataloguing them all. And um, I've, I put them in a drawer, as they go in the drawer, I mark the part number on them and how many and all that. Then um, I've made a database up, up at the house there and um, I'm going up using this database and it was an inventory database template that I found um, through Microsoft and I've adjusted it to suit myself and so I can put in the part number, the description, um, the quantity I have in, or the location, um, the quantity I have in stock, the price, the retail price of the part, the part rounds it up. So anyway, the number of, the num quantity in stock, um, and the number I would reorder. And it's set up so, say I have reorder something, I've got to buy a packet of 10 or something, and I say reorder when it gets down to six. Well, the little red flag will come up, so I can just click the little flag, and that'll give me a list. If it's the beginning of the month to put in a Sparex order or something like that, that'll give me a list of what I've used through the month, and I can then choose whether I replace those items to keep them in stock for future restorations or um, whether, yeah, I'll, I'll just let them, let them drop out of stock and, and leave it like that. Um, but yeah, I've been, I've been doing well with that. The drawers are looking good. They're a fair bit in them, but um, like one drawer might have 30 items in it or you know, 20, 30 items in it. But at least I can look the part number up on Sparex. Um, I, can, with, I can put that into the database and that'll tell me what drawer it's in, like um, you know, drawers down here I've got um, you know, transmission parts and, I, and you know, if I want a bearing and it's a transmission bearing, um, it'll tell me which drawer to go to and it, it shouldn't be too difficult to find it and it will tell me if I've got one in stock or not. I've got the old Dymo labeler going and um, I've been labelling the drawers as I've been getting to them. The drawers over here, I'm starting to fill them up, the Renegade ones, but I haven't got them numbered yet. Um, it's a game of um, like a lift pump needs a deep draw and a, a steering boot needs a short one. So I'm finding parts, I'm jamming them in drawers where they look like they'll fit, um, where they're a good fit for the hardware that where they have to live in. 
and then um, then I come along and I, I document what's in that drawer. And um, like if the other day I had some steering felts were on top of kingpins, and I had um, a bag of ten of those, so I've put them in the drawer there. Then later on I found I'd already had some up the other end there, so. Um, so I can look it up, I can put them all together in the same place. So it's, um, it, it's an inventory system set up sort of like Queensland tractor spares, but it's just so in my retirement I'm not buying parts that I've already got here that are just lost in the humdrum of it all. So um, yeah, we'll go with that. We still haven't heard with the sale of the business yet. Um, it doesn't go unconditional till next week sometime. Um, so yeah, we haven't heard any bad news and we haven't heard any good news, so we presume it's all going along as normal. Um, if they need an extension or something like that, there's, there's no problem doing that. Um, we're not going anywhere and um, it's pretty good. The, the shed cleanup's going well though. Um, I've got, you might notice this bench is clean. Um, these are the Renegade parts boxes I'm buying. and. Um, You'll notice there's no little square red ones in here because I've nicked them for another job. And so I, I have a look at what I need and I shuffle and like that might be okay for, you know, you know little rolls of wire and things like that to keep them tidy. Um, I'll be getting more of them and I'm gonna to talk to James from Sparex. They have the nice blue ones with the, I'll just show you here. The, and so it's a square tin and they have these inserts and um, yeah, this is a 12 insert. You can buy them with three or 10 or 16 even, depending on what you plan on putting in them. Say you're putting like um, um, circlips. Well, yeah, you could yeah, you could double it up and have 24 holes in there in a the little blue pot that matches everything else. So I'm putting a lot, oh, sliding on my seat here. Um, I'm putting a lot of time um, I'm just checking over there that I'm. <laughs> I'm just checking over there that I'm um, recording the sound. I've got the task cam on because it's a bit rowdy outside and things are knocking and banging a bit. So I'm just um, keeping a bit of an eye on them over there. I've probably got it a bit hot. I can see a little red light coming on when the sound peaks, but I can probably pull that back a little bit. I'd say. Oh, a couple of spots of rain on the roof. How good's that? <laughs> but but yeah, with a little diner little little dyno tagger here um, we've tagged the drawers I'm up to 35 yeah those two are 35 then I'll have another one two four six eight 21 there I've split the top over there into halves just to make it easier yeah you know, you're not looking at such a big area so so I'll have 50 something drawers for parts. Um, now whether I'm gonna fill them up or not, I don't know. Like the, the one I have over here with fuel taps and that in it, well, you know, your TED20, your brass ones with your, um, with your cork and all that, and your two bolts holding it in. Well, whenever I see one of them, I grab it and it's gone in that drawer. Um, but what I might do over time, if I have time, is restore some of those things and just have them waiting to go. So if I fiddle with a tractor and I want one in a hurry, I can do it. Um, shortly I'm going to get the, it's marvellous what you find when you're having a clean up and you may recall this little bush here and I did a video on the secret tubes on a 23C engine and I kept this one and I, as I was cleaning up the bench here I came across it again and so I don't, I've been asked by people would I make these for sale and look Perhaps later on I might, if I do um, make them for sale, I'll put them through Queensland Tractor Spares because um, <clears throat> on, the, on the agreement that we have, if it goes through, um, I don't want to be selling tractor parts um, in opposition to Dean or you know, the fellas buying them. So, um, so um, if I do make a few spares, I'll talk to him and I'll, I'll put them through the shop, so um, see how that goes. But I have been asked for quite a few. The other thing I've been asked for a lot of is making the, um, the pieces that I, where I fixed Judy's Hills hoist up the back. Boy, I could sell some of them if I chose to, but oh, no time, no time to do what I need to do, so um, we won't get too excited about all that. Um, 
the mill still needs cleaning up, but all in all, the shop's looking pretty good after my pressure cleaned it all out. Um, what I bought yesterday was a walk behind broom, um, you know, like a warehouse broom. And the idea is to, so I can sweep between the mill and all that and get it out the front and I can just whiz up and down quickly in the bigger areas here and, and keep the place tidy. So I can sweep under a tractor and get it all out where I can just run the, run the bigger walk behind I mean, broom there. So, um, and that might help me keep the place tidy. I'm, I'm really conscious at the moment of trying to keep it tidy. And the other day I got everything nice and wiped up, the toolboxes wiped, all dusted and looking lovely. Well, we had this bloody wind come through the place and you could just see the dust in the air in here. And I thought, oh, bloody hell. <laughs> what do we do with that? So anyway, we'll see. Um, Sunday we went up to the museum, had another meeting up there, which is a good meeting. And um, I'll see if I can pop a couple of photos in here. There's, a, there's an early Toft loader, the very first loader that Toft's made. I'm not 100% sure on the story yet, but it's been donated to the club and it was in... Um, one of Rob's sheds up there and it had to be shifted into the museum shed so we took the new trailer up and um, yeah lifted a fork on each side and sat it on the trailer and we got it transferred from one one farm to the next sort of thing um, it's an interesting thing it got done up years ago but it certainly needs a bit of work now but we have it in the main museum shed the section one that we have now um, so it needs a bit of work. Um, uh, I think the Lions Club did it up years ago and um, and there's bolts missing in places and to shift it they had to take the boom off and I can't see the bolt for that. We'll have to measure up and buy bolts for that and put this boom on but it was all cable operated so um, we might have a look around for a bit of good cable. We're not going to use it, it's just we'd like to have it as a static display as you know the first one and then um, the master built one that the club's got we can bring in but um, they got the master built one done up for agro trend but uh, the bloody slew cylinders are pissing out the, the, the dirt excluding seals are just cracked up and bloody mess but anyway that's fine and yeah last Tuesday um, I got a message that said um, oh some of the stuff was at agro trend still and I said, what sort of stuff and yeah the um, when they picked up the tractor balancing thing, they were supposed to um, put the a cane trolley on top and um, take that up there, but the message didn't get through. So, um, yeah, so Tuesday or Wednesday, Wednesday probably. Anyway, one day um, I got this message that the cane trolley was up in the, left in the agro train ground. <laughs> so, oh, shit. so I went and got that. Then um, halfway through getting that, um, I went from where I had the trailer parked over near Paul's um, container there to here and I, I forgot and I left the bloody the jockey wheel down. Well, I know it's a Chinese trailer, but the wheel was that pissy that in that distance it just folded the rim up like you'd travelled 100 miles. So anyway, so I pulled it off. And, um, I went and, got the, went and got the thing so the club wasn't looking like we were a bloody mob of riffraff leaving our shit everywhere. And... Um, I went and picked it up and brought it back and um, I went and went to town and I bought a new um, ARC um, XO750, I think 750 kilo one, so um, if I want to leave a tractor on it, um, I can have quite a, I can have up to 750 kilos on that drawbar, which I'll only ever have a couple, but um, it's a known quantity. It's over-engineered now, but that's good. Um, <coughs> the the heavier duty wheels are 225 instead of the 195s for the new trailer. We're still waiting on them. I was talking to Barry Friday, another couple of weeks, he reckons. But um, I did notice the other day, um, when I was up using the tilt on it, um, I, I took the famous engine from here and the, um, and the cane trolley up to the museum on Sunday to leave there, because it's club property, they can have it up there. And um, the, yeah, sometimes I'd press up and I could hear the motor running, but the thing wasn't moving. And by the time I clicked it down and up a couple of times, it started working. And it's electric solenoid, so I reckon there might be a little sticky solenoid in there that I'm, might bite me on the ass one day. Yet I'm just, I'm just not sure. Um, yeah, once you go down and back again, it'll, it'll often just work. So I, I don't know. I, I, I might have something to do there. Um, yeah, we'll just see. Um, 
the the number plate where you pull it out, the wire broke on that. So I'm thinking of just putting that on a little hinge outside to, to fold it out of the way. So, um, but look, the, the priority at the moment is to get this shed organised as a as a good, clean working space that we can film in and um, and. Yeah, the, I've been playing with these microphones, these Rode microphones, wireless go-tos they are, and um, I reckon year, ages ago, when I was using these, I got left and right balance pretty equal, but at the moment it's just given a lot of priority to left. There is right, but you're not getting it. I've, I've changed it to mix and I've changed it to mono and st all that, and it's still, still the same. And I'm looking there now and I've got a really strong left one left track but the right hand one's not so flash so anyway I don't know I'm playing with that and trying to sort that out um, uh, you probably won't notice in the sound because um, um, I can actually duplicate the tracks and put them together but um, when you're editing you can notice one side's stronger than the other by quite a bit so I usually bring the right hand side and use the left track for that um, so the left and right tracks are the same, but they will come out the different speakers. So, um, so I'm fiddling along with that. Um, I've got the computer and the laptop all Wi-Fi'd into the desk over here where I charge the phones and cameras and things like that. So that's coming along. Um, but look, we are getting places. I'm doing a lot of work here, putting a lot of hours in. And some days I go up and I think, oh, geez, it looks like I've done nothing for the day. But um, we are getting there. It's getting more and more... Um, rhyme to it and um, yeah we're not too bad so so look that's it for the stew not a lot of content um, because I'm just I'm just sorting parts and that's pretty boring shit to look at um, but we'll get there <laughs> we will get there one day I don't know how, if I bloody live long enough uh, if we um, it is getting sorted out the parts are the, the pile up the other end there on the floor is getting smaller the shelves, the drawers and all are getting fuller and fuller and getting documented and things like that. So we are getting there, but um, I was hoping to get the starter off the John Deere 420, but then with the rain, I thought, oh, it's gonna rain next week, so last week, so I thought, oh, well, I'll pull, no, he's putting the, pulling the starter off and leaving the gap there, but um, I probably need to do that so I can get it in out of the weather. I don't like it out there. Um, but yeah, the other tractors are all in here. The Dexter's in, the Massey's in. Um, yeah, the famous is gone. Um, so yeah, we are we are gaining. <laughs> it seems a long old boring show, but anyway, we're getting there. So anyway, look, thanks for dropping by. Um, that's it for this week. We'll catch you next week, and um, yeah, look, have a good one, everyone. We'll catch you later on. Okay, while we're going, okay, so I've got the computers, the laptop, and the screen, and all set up over there. There's the sound recorder putting out a good um, a good stream. That actually needs to come back. You can see when I talk loud at that little red light coming. Oi! <whistles> no, I don't want to do it now. Anyway, <laughs> I've got to fiddle with that a little bit. Um, I've been playing with that, but anyway, we'll just see. Um, see how it all happens. Um, but yeah, look, that's, that's looking okay. Um, I'm getting the drawers sorted out and documented. Um, well, and there's another problem you have, things get stuck. So, yeah, so that's the steering one. Um, quite tidy. Well, that's my tidy anyway. Um, what are you going there? Okay, that's the carby part, so I keep on hand here, the carby kits and the the bits I bring in from Villiers spares. Um, that's the ignition. I never knew I had four Sparex buddy distributor caps. Um, some of the things I've got to take them out of the box just to um, just to use the space I have more efficiently. So I have a six volt coil, a 12 volt coil, spark plugs, um, yeah, and four radio, uh, four distributor caps. And in here we have rotors and points and things like that. Um, this one here is exhaust and caps at the moment. That's not sorted yet. That's, that's just a jumble. Um, draw 10s 
looking okay. They're just decal sets and gear stick boots and bits and pieces. Um, that's David Brown. Um, that's the parts I have on hand for the David Brown when the restoration comes along. So we'll work with that. Actually, those parts are there. And where were we? No, I must have shifted them. I thought I had some more of them there. Anyway, not to worry, but um, yeah, the filters are up there. You can see the numbers, the numbers on the shelves, on the drawers, I mean, just to keep it. Eh? There's where it's smudged a little bit. So we'll try and tidy that up if we can. Um, yeah, bloody filters and it's time to put in another CRC order. And over here we're just working on that's um that's lights. Um, we couldn't get these from Sparex years ago, so I bought some quality ones and tucked away and I found them. So alternator guards and lights and butler lamps and things like that. So yeah, but I haven't got the numbers on there yet. <coughs> Pardon me. Coming down through here, we are quite a bit tidier than we were. Um, the bench is a lot cleaner now, up to the vice at least, we've done all that. Um, that's where I'm working on a Welsh plug kit. Welsh plugs are getting hard to find for some reason. Um, this here is, um, that was a nice little kit I bought at Trade Tools. Hang on, I'll see if I can open that up for you. I'll just set the camera down there for a second. There you go, nice little file set. I'm always chasing files, and most of my files are old and buggered, and I, um, I should put this thread file in there somewhere too. But yeah, this other end of the bench we're still working on. <coughs> Pardon me. Okay, I timed out a bit, but yeah, this bench here, if I can get out of the light, I've got tidied up. I, I put the big... Um, Magnetic chuck there. Those blue boxes, they're the Sparex ones, and they're a good thing. Their part number is S2421. There's 14 in Australia, and they're the inserts that you can change. So I've got quite a few of them. Um, if you remember back when I did all the um, all my threading stuff, that's what they're all in. So, so all my taps and dies are in these fellas. So that's a three box for the big ones. And this one here, it has 12 for all the others. So I've used them quite a bit in the past. They're a great thing. And if the insert bug is up, you can actually go and buy a new one and buy one with different number of holes. So, so that's good. Then the Renegade ones here, um, I've been buying up on a few of them. Looks like that sticker didn't want to stick for some reason. But um, yeah, this is, press that button and up she comes, you know, split pins and things like that. So I've got them over here near where I have the, um, the GJ kits and I'll probably sort through a lot of them, but I have them over here. So um, if I want to open one, I can actually bring it down here onto the bench and work with it then put it back um, put it back up where it needs to be so um, so a lot of stuff that takes quite a bit of time as well um, I'm just noticing some of these like crimp terminals some of these stickers aren't quite sticking as good as they should yeah it doesn't look too bad But anyway, that's what's going on there. Now, if we come over here, <laughs> there's the wheel. You wouldn't believe that it, that would bugger up from over at that little shipping con that little container over there, over to here, so badly. But anyway, we have a nice one on there now, so. Um, I may even pull the wheels off this and the, the rest of the frame stainless and it does look good. I, I might just put a foot on it. Um, but anyway, 
I don't know what I'd do with it anyway, so we'll just have to see. But um, yeah, the tractors, forklifts in the road. The tractors are all over there where they need to be, and we still have this nice clean area coming up through here. And we're <laughs> all the boxes and packets from parts and all that. We've nearly got a bin full. But um, all in all, it is looking pretty good. Um, I'm looking forward to getting that little broom, but I am, um, I am liking that I can pressure clean the floor. There's, there's hoses that I haven't got anywhere for yet. I've just stuck them there next to the bucket. They'll go in the bucket shortly, and they'll go over here with the hoses and thermostat housings. I've got to have a thermostat housing drawer, but it has to be a deep drawer. So anyway, there's JD's engine. I'll have to ring him and see how he's going with a piston. But apart from that, um, yeah, the shed's looking pretty good. Catch you all next week, eh?